Welcome to another episode of Mayo Movie Club, where we talk about great movies, and good movies, and okay movies. Regardless of their overall quality, there's always something to appreciate. I've been gone for a while, because after huge videos on Robocop and Matrix 4, I needed a break from movie analysis. But I'm back! Let's start with a bit of a forgotten movie from the 90s, but one I always remembered liking. The Negotiator, starring Samuel L. Jackson and Kevin Spacey. I thought about this movie recently after seeing the cinematic disaster known as Ambulance. They take a hostage in that movie, and the police are trying to negotiate, and all I could think was, man, this really makes me want to watch The Negotiator, which I hadn't seen in 20 years probably. It holds up. Samuel L. Jackson plays a hostage negotiator that finds himself getting framed for a crime. One of his cop friends was killed because he was investigating fraud. Some crooked cops are stealing from the department's disability fund. So they kill him, make it look like Sam Jackson did it, and also make it look like he's the one who's been stealing. The evidence is overwhelming, and he's about to be faced with years behind bars. When pleading for answers downtown at the station, things get heated when security gets involved, and Sam Jackson ends up holding the guard's gun. And now he's found himself in a hostage situation. He's crossed the line, and now he's gotta be all in. He wants answers, and he'll only talk to Chris Sabian, played by Kevin Spacey, who's an outside negotiator that he feels he can trust to not be involved in the conspiracy. So we end up in this really fun scenario where the hostage taker is completely familiar with every negotiation technique because he's been doing it for years. Negotiator versus negotiator. He knows where the cops are going to try to put cameras, when they might plan to enter the building, and you get this back and forth between two men of equal skill and knowledge, playing both sides of the situation, while Sam Jackson is trying to clear his name. The Negotiator is just a solid movie. Other 90s movies might come across as dated or cheesy, but this one continues to be a good watch. Next up, horror. You gotta have horror in a Mayo Movie Club episode, right? Let's do two, actually. The first is the classic of classics, Evil Dead 2. Sam Raimi, known by many as the director of the first three Spider-Man movies, got his start in independent horror where he established himself as a true visionary. He had a style all his own, especially in the camera work. Lots of exaggerated angles and zooms and running with the camera. Evil Dead 2 is basically Evil Dead 1 but with a higher budget and crazier. Bruce Campbell plays Ash, and he and his friends stay in a cabin and come across a book called the Necronomicon. Obviously they read it, because why wouldn't you? And the evilest of creatures are summoned. The forest comes alive and people get possessed. There's lots of blood and other disgusting fluids. Ash is an iconic lead character, spouting corny one-liners and kicking all kinds of ass. Evil Dead and Ash are so beloved that many years later they actually made a series bringing him back to fight the dead once again. Evil Dead 2 is charming, it's gross, it's very influential, and it sets up a sequel called Army of Darkness which I actually like more, probably because I saw it as a kid before I saw Evil Dead 2 as an adult. I recommend both of them, they're fun as hell. The second horror movie is one of my favorites. Maybe top 5 horror movie for me, at least top 10. The Mist, based on Stephen King's novella, directed by Frank Darabont. Top tier director, season 1 of Walking Dead, The Green Mile, The Shawshank Redemption. The guy's a master at his craft. The Mist introduces us to small town folk just going about their lives when a rolling mist comes into town, trapping people inside. Why are they trapped? Because outside, in the mist, there are creatures. Creatures that will tear you apart. Are they demons? Are they aliens? Are they even out there? Pretty much the entire movie takes place inside the grocery store and you've got a classic situation of seeing people lose their minds under pressure. That George Romero zombie experience where the living are truly more dangerous than the dead. Slowly but surely, people start turning on each other, assigning blame, following the words of a religious nut. Our main characters need to find a way to survive the horrors outside, but the longer they stay inside, the worse things get. This is one of my favorite performances for Thomas Jane, who I think is an underappreciated actor. Laurie Holden is good in it too. And the kid's good. Normally child actors piss me off, but that's because most of them suck. This kid is great though, he really sells the fear. The one big flaw I think The Mist has is the effects. The creatures are cool looking, but the quality of the CGI is kinda low, even for 2007. I can forgive it though. 
If you're a Silent Hill fan, you may notice some similarities. That's because the original novella of The Mist was a big influence on the original developers at Konami who made Silent Hill 1. Even some of the creature designs seem lifted straight from that story. So if you're a Silent Hill fan, this is required watching. The movie is notorious for its final act, which was actually altered for the movie. Changing the source material so drastically is quite risky. We always hear about fans of books who are upset at the changes done to movie versions. But this new last act is so good that when Stephen King saw it, he was quoted saying he wishes that he had thought of it. It just seals the deal and makes the entire movie so much more impactful and memorable. Alright, to end this episode, I want to talk about a movie that has been shooting up my favorites list ever since I saw it. 2020's The Kid Detective, starring Adam Brody. I saw this talked about on Red Letter Media, and I always enjoy checking out their recommendations, and they were so right about this one. Adam Brody plays a guy who used to be famous in his town as a kid. He solved mysteries for the kids at school, even adults came to him for help. The city put him up in his own office. He was just so damn smart. The future was looking bright, but tragedy struck the town and sent him down a path of destruction and depression that has led to him becoming a 30-something pathetic failure. Still writing on the successes he had 20 years ago, he's always late and hungover and miserable. It's one of the greatest displays of pathetic I've ever seen, and it's funnier every time I see it. One day he gets the chance to solve a real case, a murder. The cops haven't found any leads, so the victim's girlfriend hires him to help. He wants to prove he can do it, because everyone in his life looks down on him, or at least they look at him with pity. The movie goes from scene to scene trying to solve the case, while he's dealing with his own past and present personal issues. On top of it just being a fantastic movie all around, in the acting, cinematography, everything a movie needs to be great, it's also a fantastic mystery. How many times have you seen a movie or series where there's an intriguing mystery and when you get to the end, you're disappointed by the resolution? Or it doesn't make any sense? The Kid Detective doesn't have that problem. The mystery is incredibly well put together, and like any good mystery story, the clues present themselves to you upon rewatch. Every time I watch this movie, I notice new clues. I've seen it like six times over the past year, and every time I watch it, my god does it just get funnier and funnier. It's like Ghostbusters in that way, and I think you have to be grown up to really appreciate it. It's a very dry kind of humor, one that may not make you laugh the first time you see it. I don't remember laughing a lot the first time except for a few scenes, but I remember how much I liked the movie. I started showing it to friends, and I was laughing hysterically, more and more each time. Now just the smallest details have me laughing uncontrollably. There's so much to talk about and praise in this movie that I'm honestly considering a full video dedicated to it. Most of the clever stuff I could point out would ruin the story, so I'll save it. I'll just point out one detail that I noticed the last time I watched. Look at the door to his office. Abe Applebaum, detective. But look at it. Something's off. Specifically, the word detective is off. It's off-center which means that it used to say Kid Detective, but he scratched Kid off the glass years ago out of embarrassment and just left it like that instead of replacing the glass. When I noticed that, I died. It took me six viewings to notice it because they don't draw attention to it. They don't zoom in on it. No one makes a comment like, are you ever gonna change that glass, Abe? It's just there as a mundane detail of the world. It's such a good joke that they had the discipline to let sit there in the background where almost no one will notice. That's so admirable. The movie is full of lots of subtle details like that that show the patheticness of the main character. And despite his patheticness, you want him to succeed because you get the feeling that this guy really deserved better. Please watch The Kid Detective, and then show it to a friend so you can start appreciating the humor and details. This one is a real treasure. If you don't get it at first, you may be too young. Give it another 15 years and come back, you might see it differently. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Mayo Movie Club, it's good to be back. It's been a pleasure as always to share these movies with you, until next time.